Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to this Tech Strong Learning Experience brought to you by BitRise. My name is Cody, and I'd like to thank you for joining us once again here on Tech Strong Learning. We've got an exciting presentation ahead. Um, but before we get things kicked off, we do have just a couple of housekeeping notes I'd like to review. First, today's session is being recorded. So if you miss any of our discussion, perhaps you'd like to rewatch or maybe share with a friend. The on-demand recording will be made available shortly after we conclude this live session today. If you'd like to engage with us, there are a couple of options for you to do so. The first option is to use the chat tab, which can be found on the right side of your screen. I'd like you to start testing out this chat function for us by letting us know from where you are joining us. If you have any questions, we do request you send those into that Q&A tab, which is directly to the right of the chat tab. Sending in your questions to the Q&A just helps us ensure that we can get around to them. It helps us stay neat and organized. So if you could send those there, we'd really appreciate it. We've got a series of polls that we will be launching throughout today's program. So we do really want your participation there. And um, if you click over in the handouts, you'll see there are some additional resources available. So feel free to grab those as well. Of course, before we close things out today, we will be giving giving away four $25 Amazon gift cards. Be sure to stick around for the duration of our topic today. So our discussion today is releasing for mobile, think different. And I'm joined by Ben Brow, solutions engineer at BitRise. Ben, thank you so much for joining me today. Would you like to go ahead and take it from here? Yeah, thanks, Cody. And um, thanks everybody for attending. Um, get into the agenda, uh, kick us off. There we go. So um, we're talking today all about how you release mobile apps. And, and we'll just start. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about BitRise, which is where I work. Um, then we'll get into the real interesting stuff. And um, what we're going to cover um, really is going to be categorized in um, three different ways. So, you know, you hear a lot, especially on DevOps.com about continuous delivery. And this is fundamentally different when you do it for mobile. So we're gonna look at a typical mobile release. Um, we'll call it an unoptimized mobile release. And we're gonna talk about the consequences of how you release for mobile and how you can make it better. Um, we're, I'm going to shoot for 45 minutes of talking at you, and then um, I want to make sure we have plenty of time for Q&A. So we'll get right into it. A um, little bit about me. So I'm a solutions engineer at BitRise, uh, which just means that I work with our customers to make sure that they are successful. Uh, next slide, you'll learn what BitRise even is. Uh, but my background, I got into the software industry as a manual QA tester. And so the process of releasing, right, and validating some piece of software before you push it out to your users is something which is very dear to me because I have spent years of my life doing this in very painful ways. So I am very motivated to make this better. Um, I got into iOS development um, and really started my mobile career in 2011. Um, and then about six years later, got into Android development. I've worked as an um, automation tester. I've worked as a manual tester. I've worked as an iOS developer, Android developer, also done um, stuff on the back end, a little bit of um, cloud infra. And I really got into the world of DevOps in 2018. I read the book Continuous Delivery by Jez Humble. Um, maybe some of you have read it. If you haven't, go read it. Uh, really changed the way that I thought about how to release software. Um, coming from my original background as a tester, um, I, I had been searching my entire career for uh, the optimal way of releasing software. And he really laid it out for me in that book. Um, the idea of quick, painless, stress-free uh, events that take place every day um, and pushing 
pushing code out to users on a very frequent basis, um, decoupling, releasing from deploying. These were all ideas that just got me very excited. And so I've been focused on applying these DevOps concepts to mobile since 2018. A little bit about BitRise. So BitRise is where I work as a solutions engineer. We're a CI CD platform. Um, that's, if you look at all this wall of text, it's really just that black bolded two words there on the second line. We are a CI CD platform. We help you uh, build, test, and deploy your mobile apps better so that you can um, increase your impact, whether that's like, you know, you want your app to make more money or um, you have um, some other, um, uh, something else that you're trying to uh, accomplish with your app. That's what we help you do. Um, we've got a bunch of customers, a uh, bunch of different types of customers, ranging from, um, you know, the, the, the big social networks like Reddit and um, uh, more traditional banks like NatWest, and then um, also startups, traditional enterprises. Uh, BitRise is really what unifies all of these uh, customers is the fact that BitRise uh, is sort of your, your one-stop mobile-focused uh, CI-CD environment. So we got that out of the way. Let's, let's get into the talk today. So how is releasing different from mobile? Um, I've just charted out, what are these, eight, eight dimensions that I think it's different. There are more, but that's what I could fit on a slide. So we're going to go through uh, each of these and we're going to compare like, let's say you're a web developer or you're publishing something to, you know, you're, you're releasing some code to a backend somewhere. Um, we're going to compare that to a mobile app developer. So the very first one is probably obvious to everybody, right? Um, as a web developer, uh, you own the tool chain, right? You own the server. Um, so you can get that code in, uh, into production usage however you want. You define the tool chain. As mobile developers, we're very locked in to the Apple App Store, Google Play Store. There are others, the Huawei, uh, Huawei Store. Um, these are the, the two primary ones that I interact with. But fundamentally, we don't, we don't control that vehicle by which we get our code into the hands of users. Um, the next is because we don't control it, we can't release as frequently as we want. So I was talking about that book, Continuous Delivery. I got so excited. Wow, people are releasing thousands of times a day. That is so cool. We can't do that for mobile. Um, the best, so I work with many uh, mobile teams, the best teams are releasing at best weekly. Um, so if you think about the uh, number of product iterations that you can have, right? How, how many things can you try in your product? You're sort of limited to 52 times a year that you can get something new in the hands of your users. So I'm just going to pause here. I think what would be really interesting is um, looking at the distribution of the audience today. Um, how frequently do you release? Uh, and I'm going to ask Cody to throw up that poll. And Cody, when you see... Um, a lot of responses coming in. Are you able to share those results on the screen? Absolutely. I'll go ahead and pop those up right now and we'll see them continue to update. Thank you. Okay, I am super impressed by the numbers that I'm seeing here. Um, the fact that uh, 
Okay, it's going down a bit, but but around half are releasing weekly or biweekly is terrific because we at Bitrise, we consider that to be a best practice. Um, and um, for those that are in the monthly and the less than monthly category, what you're going to learn today um, are some tools and tactics to help you increase that release frequency. And you're also going to learn why that even matters. So I'm going to take back the screen share. Okay, thank you, Cody. Um, and so the next category here is the deployment environment, right? So um, there's a big difference between mobile and web in that once we push our code out, it's out there forever on the, our end users' devices. So we don't have the ability to roll back a release or to fix forward, or rather kind of fix forward is our only option, but we have to go through a really long process that we're gonna chart out in a minute. So the consequences of a bad release are much greater because we don't have as much of an ability to respond to that. We don't control the server that this code runs on, or we don't control the phone that this runs on. We can use tactics like feature toggles to remotely enable or disable the code running on our end users' phones. But those are really sort of um, just um, tools that we use because of the limitation. So again, I, I, well, I just mentioned this, are rollbacks possible? No, rollbacks are not possible on mobile. And of course we all, anybody who submitted an app to the Apple App Store knows this. Uh, reviews are required, right? So anytime I wanna get new code in the hands of my users, I have to go through this review process. There's this gatekeeper, whether it's Google or Apple, that has to approve my code. And that really slows me down. So I lose a lot of control in this process. The consequence of that, of course, is that in that web or server context, I can get a change out in seconds. And for mobile, it's gonna take me days, right? Um, maybe, Maybe if I have like a hot fix that I really push through and I can ask Apple for an expedited review, which I've had to do. And it's always very stressful whenever you have that bad release. Like maybe you can get it out in under a day. Um, but typically it's going to take days for you to get your code out into production. You can fully automate that release to your own server. But for mobile, no. Unfortunately, there's always going to be a bit of manual work in there. And what we're going to talk about today is how you can minimize that to the greatest degree. And then lastly, you know, this is something I briefly mentioned at the beginning. Can you decouple your release process from your business, right? And, or a different way of saying this, can you separate deploy from release? And in other contexts where you, you can, um, you know, let's say you're using feature toggles on a server on a website, you can publish code without actually enabling it uh, in the environment where it's running. But, uh, and you can do something similar on mobile, but the, but the fact of the matter is you're still writing release notes, right? You're still publishing, um, app screenshots and you're worrying about, you know, ASO app store optimization, getting the right keywords in there, the release, the whole mechanics of release are very much tied to other business processes whenever we're talking about mobile. 
So I'm going to take you through a real example. Prior to working at Bitrise, I worked at this little company called RX Saver um, here in the U.S. when we were purchased by another company called GoodRx. Um, GoodRx is is bit, kind of a big name here in the U.S. It's uh, has an app and a website for um, uh, saving money on prescription drugs. So um, um, I'm going to describe, this is, I was a tech lead for the mobile app at RX Saver. I'm going to describe to you um, what I saw at this company. Um, and um, so the web deploys went something like this. Merge a PR to your trunk branch. Your continuous delivery pipeline runs automatically, publishes that change. And you can turn it off and on with a feature toggle. So we would use Launch Darkly. There are other tools. Optimizely, I think, is one. Very simple, very easy. I wish it could be like that for us, but it's not. Um, you notice the text gets smaller. All right, so for the mobile apps, we would cut our iOS branch, right, or a release branch on our iOS app. And um, actually got to get, text is too small. I got to go find my notes that I printed out so I can actually see it. Okay. Um, so then we would have some automated steps. Okay. So, we, so not fully, not a fully manual process. We were able to automate what we could. Right? So we had UI tests, sexy UI tests that we had written and we ran those. Um, we would take all the tickets, right, that were um, a part of that ticket or that release, and we would run some nice automation to generate internal release notes so that all of our, you know, uh, non-engineer stakeholders could get a summary of um, what's going into the release. And then we would do an automatically uh, automatic upload to test flight. Um, so test flight we would use to distribute that release internally. Um, then we had some manual process. So whoever was the release captain for that particular release would send a Slack message to our marketing person. Hey, we got a new release going out. It's got these features. Do we need to update the release notes? Do we need new screenshots? Can you start working on those? Okay, we would go in to uh, set the internal distribution groups and send that release candidate out to um, the stakeholders within the business who were going to have a look at that before it actually went out um, to the stores. Then we had some manual regression tests. So you know, we got, we got pretty far in automating a lot of the functional UI test cases with this app, but with mobile, there are specific challenges. Um, one of the ones that we never got around to solving is upgrade path scenarios, right? So um, you, one of the test cases that you always need to cover prior to a release is, you know, I'm version 1.1 today, I'm about to release version two. Are there database migrations as a part of that? And I need to install the old version on a phone, set some state, you know, save some stuff, log in, whatever it is, and then do the install of the new version and check that all that state properly carried over, that there weren't any problems with the database migration. So upgrade paths were one of those always on the to-do list that we never got around to automating. So we would have to test those manually. And then, you know, of course, you're going to find you're going to find a problem. Uh, so if there was a problem, then, um, you know, uh, do a fix, merge the fix into the release branch, generate a new release candidate to run through the, the regression tests, either all of them, if you're being super thorough or just, you know, focus set based on the particular bug and start it back over. So when I first joined RX Saver, uh, a release actually took um, on the order of a week uh, to get through just this part here. 
And so my big, um, my big project was um, how do we automate as much of this toil as possible? We are completely wasting developers' time. Um, we got it down to about an hour of manual effort, which I'm very proud of. So um, I'm just going to pause here and ask Cody to, to issue our next poll question, which is how many engineer hours do you spend or, or, or rather, I'm sorry, that, that's the next one. Uh, how do you test prior to a release? So what's what's the mix? And um, be very interested to see um, the breakdown of the attendees here. And Cody, if you could share those results, that'd be great. Okay, so numbers still coming in, but um, not surprising to see nobody has achieved the dream. And I think, you know, uh, oh, all right, here we go. We got somebody. So congratulations. Um, I think maybe you should be giving this webinar. But uh, yes, uh, stay with me. I think you'll still learn something, but that, that's really cool. Um, we have at least one person who's got a fully automated process. Um, looks like the bulk are in mostly manual, some automated and all manual. Um, so, you know, getting those, uh, at least getting a subset of your test cases automated is just such a such an important thing because uh, you know as you as your app has success as it grows as your team grows if you don't get out ahead of that then eventually your regression testing process is going to be that bottleneck in getting new code out to users um, and it's just going to grow in you know in a linear fashion um, as you add test cases, as you make, you know, add features to your app. So um, I've worked in the past at a place where it actually got up to three weeks, three weeks of manual regression testing by a dedicated QA team um, in order to get a new change up to production that kills your business and that and that company ended up having to do a complete rewrite of their app because of the accumulated tech debt. Um, and with a that rewrite had a central focus on how do you make the code testable? Um, how do you increase the amount of automation? So this, if you don't control for this, you, you're gonna find that your growth as a business is gonna be constrained. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we dropped off only, you know, about halfway through this release process. So let's chart the rest of this out. Okay, so next thing, super critical part that often doesn't, is not involved in releasing for other platforms, we had to go talk to the stakeholders. So I talked about how tightly coupled a mobile release is to the rest of the business. And that means that in multiple places where I've worked, you have to get sign off from people like your product manager, uh, some engineering leader, but maybe also legal to, if you're in a regulated industry um, or um, any other role, marketing. Um, so it's a sort of a collaborative thing. And, and the software developer, that release captain, is the person who is central to that, which doesn't make a lot of sense. That's not what they're good at. Um, every single time when we were releasing at RX Saver, we would forget to write the Spanish release notes because unfortunately I don't speak Spanish. Nobody on my mobile team spoke Spanish. So it wasn't top of our mind. Um, so, um, and, and our marketing person would also forget because she's not a Spanish speaker and wasn't a focus area. But we had a Spanish language version. It was a localized app with English and Spanish. 
So, okay, so we got to go back. Release captain. Hey, Slack, the marketing person. Hey, can you can you get me those Spanish translations as well? And then finally, all right, we submit the app for review. Now, this involved logging in to App Store Connect and actually clicking a button, which is always scary. Um, we're going to talk because you don't want to click the wrong button and, you know, do something bad, whether that's like clicking the wrong button on a different app or uh, I don't know, there, there are consequences that can happen. Um, this is particularly relevant in Google Play. I get a lot of feedback from my customers that Google Play has a very confusing UI. Um, and so you might want to do a staged release in Google Play where you were just released to 5% of users but you accidentally do a full release or you're clicking on, as I said, the wrong app, depending on the release channel. So there are a lot of mistakes that can be made by actually logging in to App Store Connect or Google Play Console. Um, finally, okay, so now you gotta get patient. You, now you're waiting for review. Um, and that, Maybe it only takes a few hours. Apple's really gotten better at that. Google's been quite fast for quite a while. Um, but it could take a while, depending on the time of year. OK, so for me, when I was the release captain, I was ch just checking obsessively, wasting my time. And now that I've submitted my app for review, my iOS app, I am going to um, start the Android process because I want to release these two at the same time. Um, this sort of depends on the business and how de decoupled your uh, feature releases are from rather, you know, how, how much you're using feature toggles. But um, fundamentally, at some point, you're going to, your, your presence in the App Store is going to be coinciding with some release of the code. And therefore, it has to be coordinated. Okay, so you start that Android release process. It's going to be very similar. Okay, yay, our iOS app was approved. So now we're going to roll it out, and App Store Connect allows us to do a week-long stage rollout. They do not allow you to control the percentages. It's a defined percentage each day for that week. It's kind of ridiculous. I don't know why they don't allow that, but that's Apple for you. Um, Google Play does allow you to find custom percentages, so you can move it along more quickly if you want to. But um, our process was to do a week-long staged rollout, so it's like 1% the first day, 2% the next day, 5% of end users get this new version the third day, goes, starts to go up all the way to 100 at the end of the week. And as soon as this starts, we are daily and probably more than daily checking SLOs. So these are service level objectives, right? So um, how's the crash rate looking for this new version? Uh, how are the performance numbers on this new version? And if the SLOs are breached, then we have to halt that release and um, do a hot fix. Um, so we go here. Um, one of my responsibilities as a release captain was uh, every every day throughout that release, sending out internal reports to those business stakeholders. What are the performance numbers looking like? Are we looking good? Okay, so we made it to 100%. Our app is fully, re fully released, and I get to do it again next week. So this was my release process um, and my most recent role. And it was ridiculously manual um, for a software developer who could be spending more time adding value by implementing features. So I'm going to ask Cody to put in the next poll question. I already told y'all what it is. Uh, how many engineer hours do you spend per release? And Cody, can you get those live 
live results. So super impressed by that, by that zero to one hour. Amazing. And I'm glad to see a number of people in that one to five as well. And then we have a lot in the uh, 40 plus, or, or rather 10 plus, 40% in the 10 plus. So let me take back the screen because I have two, uh, um, I think two really important slides that explain why this matters. And then we're going to actually look at how you can improve it. Um, this is a study, this comes from a study that McKinsey did, and they partnered with um, some big names, HashiCorp, Microsoft, Pivotal, and Red Hat. And it's kind of hard to read this because they're like a bunch of acronyms and stuff, but CAGR, C-A-G-R, is basically a, a measure of like year-over-year -year growth rate. And so what we're looking at with this is basically companies that are in the top performers. So that would be that, that one person who has a fully automated test process and spends less than an hour on a release, right? These are the companies that grow at a 5x higher multiple, so of revenue growth. So, I mean, that is just staggering that companies that get this developer velocity right and how you can do continuous delivery have a much higher compound annual growth rate for revenue year over year. So if you are a developer and you're in this webinar, this is how you justify investments in your tech debt. This is how you justify improving processes because the data doesn't lie. This is all self-reported data. Um, this is not just those names that I, I, I mentioned. This is a much larger survey. Uh, it was just done in collaboration with uh, those large, large uh, companies. This is, comes from the same, um, the, 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 the same report. And what you can see here is that if you're able to empower your developers to avoid these manual processes that I just described, that has a positive correlation with how your business innovates, with your customer satisfaction, with how your brand is perceived. And that last one, talent management, how happy your developers are. So there's, there's an influential paper that was published by Facebook several years ago. It was called Continuous Deployment of Mobile Software at Facebook. And they described how they spent four years investing in their release process for mobile. They got it from every two months down to every one week. So um, these uh, top tech companies like Facebook are investing in doing this right. And the reason why is that, that you see the evidence in this data, how it has a positive impact on your business. So the best way to understand how you can make this go faster for your team is to look at an example. And um, I call this release automation. Um, we're, we're doing a DevOps.com webinar. You know, DevOps uh, owes its DNA to Toyota and the Toyota production system. And they have this concept of automation, which they call automation with a human touch. And that's how it's got to be whenever you release from mobile. Now, you see a bunch of logos on this slide. Um, Facebook, I mentioned that paper um, that they came out with. Shopify, unfortunately, has a closed source tool that they use to improve this. And now a bunch of commercial players have gotten in the game to sort of 
spread these best practices and these tools that until now have only been available to top tech companies and make them available to everyone. So um, Runway, Tramline, and of course my own employer, Bitrise, are uh, examples of companies that are making tools available to help you automate this process. So you don't have to spend four years on it. So let's do a demo. And I am going to share my screen. Um, if I can figure out how, give me one moment. There we go. Pause that. Okay. So we are in Bitrise. And I'm in one of my little demo workspaces here. I have a couple of apps in this demo workspace. I have an Android app. I've, it's the open source DuckDuckGo app that I like to build here in Bitrise. And I also have an iOS app. And this is my own code. And we're actually going to look at how we would release this iOS app. So I'm going to go to the releases tab and um, we're going to click into oops, iOS. You can see Android is not supported yet. That's going to change in the coming weeks, two, three weeks. Um, so here is my release dashboard for this iOS app. And you can see I've got a bunch of releases that I've done in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new release. Oh, lost my screen. And I'm just going to use a previous template so that you don't have to be bored by watching me click a bunch of things. I'm going to say, we're going to release version 1.0.13 to the App Store. And I'm going to do this in demo mode. This is my special thing. Um, uh, it allows me just to talk to stubbed endpoints rather than actually release this thing to the store. And so here's my, my release management dashboard for version 1.0.13. And we're going to look at how I can use automation, right? Automation with a human touch. So I'm going to do as much as possible through automated means while still having that human in the loop to make sure everything um, is um, um, looking good and um, to do the sort of business aspects of things that we now know are tightly coupled to a mobile release. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select a branch in my repository and a Bitrise workflow um, where I'm going to get that IPA file that I plan on releasing. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the most recent build from that branch and workflow. And there it is. So my release candidate comes from build number 71. All right. So next, my next step, right, is uh, publish it up to test flight. And that already happened automatically for me because of that uh, setting that I set. Um, and so, um, you know, one of the things that you experience as a mobile developer is you have to wait for test flight to process every new release. So um, Bitrise, uh, the release management tool, will pull test flight and give you updates whenever that's done. So I'm actually going to break out of this flow and just show you that I've actually set up a Slack, a Slack webhook. So now instead of having to press refresh and waste that developer time, the developer is just going to get notified on Slack whenever that processing is completed. All right, so now we're going to go down to approvals. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, a, uh, a mobile release involves many teams. So um, you might need QA approval. You might need approval of marketing uh, about the new release, legal, engineering leadership, whoever it is. However your organization works, you can assign those approvals to people. Now, I just assign them all to me because I'm doing this demo. 
and then they will log in and the release is gated until those stakeholders give their approval. This is really important for regulated industries that need that paper trail of the right people having been involved before the release goes out. So everybody gave their approval and now, okay, I'm going to go ahead and create version 1.0.13 in App Store Connect. And BitRise does that th for me through a uh, integration that, that BitRise maintains. I'm going to provide, if you've ever released a mobile app, you have to provide some encryption information. I'm going to do that through BitRise. And then I'm going to manually release this version. I could have it automatically or rather automatically release as soon as the app store review is done. But perhaps I like want to coordinate that with Android or something. Uh, you know, I could either say automatically do it on a certain day or I can just manually do it. So in this case, I'll manually do it. And I'll use that seven day staged rollout that I discussed. All right. So my marketing person can now log into BitRise and I don't have to give them access to App Store Connect where they might make a mistake and they can fill in things like the App Store metadata. And one of the nice things about using an automation tool is that you can limit the roles and permissions so that all a marketing person can do is just update the marketing part and they don't have to have access to everything else. One of the limitations whenever you log into App Store Connect is that anybody in that Apple developer org has access to all apps, which means, which, you know, we all, as DevOps practitioners, we're familiar with, um, you know, assigning uh, least necessary privileges to people that is not a good model in App Store Connect. And so if you can layer automation on top and then use a separate tool with more robust, robust roles and permissions, you're reducing a lot of risk for your organization. So I'm going to submit my app for review. And now it's in review. I can wait for the Slack notification, or if I'm nervous, I can just click check status and all right, it was reviewed. So I proceed to that next stage and I am going to go ahead and release my app. So there it is, my release is in progress. And that is a release, what I call release autom automation using BitRise. And let me just go back to my slides here. Okay, so we're going to go quickly through this because I want to make sure to leave plenty of time for Q&A. Um, but risk factors and consequences of a bad release process. Um, you risk manual errors. I already talked about those App Store Connect permissions. It's a huge waste of very expensive developer time. And the consequence of it taking a long time is that you have fewer opportunities to iterate on your actual mobile app, try new things with the product, make more money. And then whenever everything runs through the manual steps of a mobile developer, that's not transparent for the stakeholders. So by including some automation, right, people can sign up for Slack alerts and they can see what's happening, how the release is progressing. Um, the app store, right, um, if you make a mistake, it's you're going to get rejected. Um, this this is a big risk to businesses around Christmas time because the app store actually closes in late December. And so if you have that one release that you want to get out, 
before the end of the year, especially before people get new iPhones um, before, or, you know, for, for Christmas, but there's a mistake, you've lost your opportunity. So all of this adds up to a less successful app. Um, if we think about, you know, that, that was sort of a bad release process. What about a bad release? So there are catastrophic failure scenarios, right? So I talked about a database migration. You might brick your app with a bad database migration. The app crashes on startup with a new version. That's going to lead to app uninstalls. It's going to lead to bad star ratings. You're going to have to release a hotfix. And with mobile, because of how involved that release process is, it's going to take a much higher, a much larger amount or longer amount of time to get to a resolution. And so a lot of engineering organizations today are measuring MTTR, mean time to resolution, and it's higher on mobile. Not to mention, you're again wasting developer hours on having to do another unnecessary release. So a release on mobile has long-term business impact because you cannot just roll back so that that bad experience stays with the users for a longer amount of time. Again, it adds up to a less successful app. So we're going to do one more poll question here. And um, that is, what percentage of your releases require a hot fix? And Cody, can you get those results up on the screen? All right, looking good. Um, we haven't cracked 33%, which is great. Uh, 33 to 50, there we go. So we got one. And I've been there, right? No shame in that. I've been there. Um, it, you, you know, it's tough to get everything under control, all of your automated testing and all processes under control, where this is a smooth, easy, uneventful process. So, um, you know, this is harder on mobile. Okay, I'm going to take back the screen now. And um, so underlying problems that we have to solve here, right? Too many hours are being spent by engineers on manual toil, not adding value. Engineers are not project managers. They should not have to be responsible for coordinating these business stakeholders. But often it falls on them to do that. Um, there's risk anytime you have manual processes. You don't want to make a mistake. And by putting this solely in the developer's hand, it takes business stakeholders away from the release process and it's less transparent. So we can see from a release automation approach that we have we are swapping manual toil for automating the upload, the review, and the rollout. Okay, engineers are no longer project managers. Uh, actually, I want to go back to that. Everything that I showed you in that dashboard can be done by a product manager. Once you automate everything and you put a nice, easy to understand UI in front of it, an engineer doesn't even have to be the release captain. Um, we take away the risks of clicking the wrong thing in the stores. And we're using the more robust access controls of a SaaS tool. And then finally, you can use those notification integrations to make this a lot more transparent for your business stakeholders. So the outcomes here, right, a more bigger picture, your hot fix rate goes down, your ability to push code out goes up, meaning you can release more code more frequently, getting to market sooner makes your business more competitive. You get to make those developers happy. So my very last poll, and um, 
And I realize we're a little over the time I had allotted for Q and A. Um, if, if you are interested in, um, learning more about BitRise, uh, you know, release process, um, just please go ahead and raise your hand there by indicating if you're not that's cool too. Uh, just click nothing. So, um, no need to, uh, show those results on screen. Um, I want to open it up to Q and A and I'm going to ask Cody to moderate that for me because I, I uh, can't multitask. Absolutely. No worries at all, Ben. Um, so we have received a couple of responses, but I do want to go ahead and ask the audience to send in any questions you may have. And if you don't have any questions, feel free to check out the handouts tab where again, there are some resources there for you. So Ben, um, this one is not so much of a question, but more of a comment. But this participant says, Apple will now send a push notification to the test flight app when the review status changes. So you no longer have to obsessively check. Oh, nice, nice. Good um, news. Yeah, that is good news. <laughs> uh, that same participant uh, gave us a question. Do these folks all need a BitRise account to give approval? So I, I suppose that means within your team. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, of course, if you're using BitRise, yes. Um, one of the things that we're actually looking at is integrating this with um, um, more project management tools. Um, oh, gosh, the one uh, is escaping me. Of course, it always does. Um, but um, um, there's, uh, of course, there's Jira, and we're looking at a Jira integration, um, very commonly used tool. There's another, there's another sort of like compliance driven tool that whose name is escaping me, um, which we're integrating into. So a lot of enterprises run all of their compliance and processes through um, this tool. And so what we're essentially doing is making it possible for these business stakeholders who don't want to have to know what BitRise is um, to just click the button in the place where they're comfortable or they're, they're familiar working. Um, so, you know, essentially, uh, I think it, it kind of follows the same theme that I was talking about there, which is like, um, you know, these these uh, these release processes are often um, defined by the developers. They're sort of developer focused, right? And so, um, understanding that a mobile release involves more uh, parts of the business means that you also need to make it easier for those parts of the business. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, can this workflow incorporate beta app distribution and then they follow up with Google Play and test flight? Yes, the answer is yes. So internal, external testing groups, uh, different release tracks in the Play Store, yes. Um, so not necessarily relevant for this, but at what point is a vulner is vulnerability scanning and remediation performed before the push? Okay, yeah, good question. Um, so some of my customers do that like on every PR. Um, other customers do it like in their release branch on their trunk branch, or rather in their release workflow on either their um, release branch or uh, on their like stable trunk branch. Um, I don't, um, I don't have a recommendation to make either way. Um, but, um, you know, typically you're wanting to automate that as well, right? Um, using their bunch of different, um, uh, security scanning tools out there. Um, we integrate with many of them, um, Sonar, uh, Veracode, uh, we have a, a new really cool integration with AppDome. Um, but, you know, as some part of the automated build, uh, and test pipeline that then, um, leads into having an artifact available for that, like release automation stage. So Ben, in your experience, what is the best Git flow strategy to have all ready to release automation? Oh, uh, I'm not doing religious wars in this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends on your team, what your team is comfortable with, size of your team. Um, 
these are uh, you know these are, these are things that people feel passionately about. Um, I, I luckily I'm past the stage in my career where I think there's one best thing. Awesome. Um, so it looks like we have exhausted all of our questions for right now. Um, so Ben, I do just want to ask you if you do have any closing thoughts or anything you feel our audience absolutely needs to walk away from this program with top of mind. Yeah. So um, I think you know. Um, it's important for developers to understand the business impact of what they do. It's how you get a, it's how you get a promotion, um, and it's how you make sure that the uh, app that you're working on is going to be successful. Um, I think um, my light bulb for me went off whenever I I started learning about DevOps, and um, I realized, hey, here's something that I can do to make my team more successful. So um, look at your build, test, deploy process, identify the toil, figure out how you can eliminate it and you know, automate that. Um, I think the other thing is like, understand that you're in mobile. Um, mobile is different than in other environments and um, Consider an automation approach, automation with a human touch. Um, so full automation comes with its own drawbacks and it also comes with, um, uh, it comes sometimes with some risks. Um, mobile doesn't necessarily demand that. Um, so that's, I hope, what, what the audience will take away from this webinar and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed it. Awesome, Ben. It was, a, it was a pleasure getting to know you before the program and always a pleasure hearing from you during the program. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Perfect. Um, so I would like to remind everyone who is with us today that our session was recorded. You will be receiving an email with a link to access this recording on demand. And of course, you can find it living on the DevOps website at devops.com slash webinars. And then be sure to look in the on demand section where it will be there waiting for you soon. We have those four $25 Amazon gift cards to give away. So our winners are Philip K, Melissa P, Sylvester D, and Zachary M. So to our four winners, keep an eye on your inbox to claim your gift card. It should make its way over to you in about the next 48 hours. If you don't happen to see that email, just check your spam folder in case it happens to be filtered out. I'd like to thank BitRise for sponsoring our program today. And to everyone here still listening, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time, and we also really value your feedback. So as soon as we close out, there will be a survey that pops up. Let us know what you thought about our program today, or if maybe you have suggestions for an upcoming program. Cody, one thing. Hey, I'm on LinkedIn. If you, have any, if you think of any questions afterwards, hit me up on LinkedIn. That's where you can find me. Absolutely. Awesome. I love it, Ben. Um, so, Ben, thank you. Thank you to BitRise and to everyone else, please, or sorry, thank you for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day and you may now disconnect.